Hi, good morning. So, I hope that this will wake you up. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, good morning. Um, welcome, and I hope you've been, uh, been enjoying your uh, uh, show so far. Um, this morning, we are going to talk about Genesis task routing uh, for, for to engage cloud. So, uh, my name is Kim Rondo. I'm the product line director uh, managing the um, task routing. Um, and this is Marat, my uh, development uh, manager for, um, for our digital platform on, uh, on um, PNH Cloud. So, um, this morning, we are going to talk about, so the, um, about what Genesis task routing is. I'll turn on the light. Oh, okay. Um, we're gonna. Um, I'll present some use cases that um, you can apply to the to uh, task routing, and then of course, uh, kind of an overview of the architecture, uh, what happened in the life of the task, and uh, what can we do with the task. And then I'll go through a little sample of how you can get a task from uh, Salesforce into Genesis, basically. All right, so. Um, Genesis Task Routing is a service that we have on our digital platform uh, for PureEngage Cloud. It has um, it's it's a it's a full solution actually. Um, it and um, it has uh, APIs that you can use from any external applications that allow um, you know external REST call um, to in, and that's how you would be able to invoke uh, the creations of the work items uh, in Genesis. And then, of course, you would use designer to basically classify that that um, uh, work items. And then, um, if for any reason the data that you send over, you want to add more um, data onto that task to further um, classify it down the, the line, you know, uh, in other applications, you will be able to do that. And of course, if uh, uh, using designer, you will be able to uh, target the best skill agents or agent group or any of the uh, routing um, rules that you want to make with that work items. Um, agent desktop, you would use agent desktop to manage that work items, for example. And then of course, um, with the addition of the service client API, using agent desktop will allow you to also screen pop to the external work, um, the external system to be able to see the full um, information about that task. So the data that you submit to bring into Genesis basically are just very, you know, uh, very specific pieces of data that you want to um, manage or you want to be able to handle in Genesis. Otherwise, you know, you just need some very basic data to do that. And then of course, we have our uh, the reporting um, that are will be based on either you know when the task arrived, some of the statistics that you can get, um, uh, and then also about the agents handling back those uh, st uh, steps or the work items. So these are some of the use cases that you can basically apply to the solutions. For example, uh, for marketing, if you are doing a campaign or lead management system in Salesforce or any of the other um, you know, lead management uh, product um, applications out there, you'll be able to do this to basically route um, uh, to uh, route the, the uh, specific leads to your agents based on their availability. You can actually um, you know, and kind of uh, interspace it with whatever that they're already handling with other channels in Genesis. Uh, for sales, uh, this would work well if you want to submit uh, account or contacts um, into uh, Genesis. And basically, these are more for uh, for sales. Let's, for example, you may have a um, you know if um, the uh, customer is doing uh, something on your website and you want to be able to see what they're doing and also kind of encourage them to complete their their um, you know to encourage them to complete their um, uh, their cart, for example. Uh, service, um, many times a lot of uh, website or a lot of application, a lot of uh, product company out there uh, may have uh, some very straightforward, simple tasks that, um, you know, uh, as, a, as, an in, um, as a customer that you can complete. So basically, you know, basic things like, you know, 
um, you, you know, either asking questions or, or resolving a case or following up on a case, for example. You have that ability to just, you know, have that um, for your customer to, uh, uh, you know, so that, you know, they can interface without having to talk to a real person or even chat at that moment. And then you can take it further, um, you know, in, in the case. So tax routing leverage um, the same um, architecture that we use for our cloud digitals. Um, so if you were in our um, overview yesterday, you probably have already seen this picture. So our digital channels is, is, the, platform, uh, is um, uh, the platform that we have in order for you to submit all of these, um, all these different um, uh, channels. Or, or, uh, all these different channels into our CreateEngage cloud, for example. Uh, in this case, with Open Media, you will be able to submit from, from Oracle, from any web application, or from Salesforce. It's the ability of the native, uh, of the application, that are able to just, um, you know, invoke this uh, work items. So there is, um, I got a question this morning, there, there is um, some protocol that we are putting um, um, into this. So in order to do that submit, you also need um, an XAPI key from our side, and then you need a very specific URL in order to be able to use that URL to submit. Um, those will get, uh, once you sign on to use the service, you will have to configure those in our product so that then you just pass those pieces of data over to your um, external uh, development team, and then they can just add that as the header to the HTTP post um, that they are uh, doing from within that application. Any questions so far? So the life of a task. So for example, this is an example that we have uh, for our demo, um, and you can actually see the same demo over in our Genesis Cloud pod uh, over in the uh, Genesis zone. So uh, I'm going to go into, as a bank, I'm going to, as a customer of G-Bank, I, I want to apply for a credit card. So once I click on that, I can fill out all the information here uh, in regards to my credit application. Once I submit the applications, um, the, um, um, the application underneath, for example, that web application, will invoke these um, um, this particular API in order to submit the, that task into Genesis. And as the successful submission, the application itself will get an interaction ID back. And in the, that case, if you are, uh, for example, um, you know, for our, um, uh, uh, for our sample app, for example, we may, you know, put that into a database somewhere if we want to just so that we have a tracking of, yes, this is the interaction that will be routed to a customer, I mean the agent. So uh, once it's submitted into Genesis, of course, um, designer will take over, and it will be able to um, target the um, correct um, agent based on whatever rules that you want to interrogate the data load, uh, the payload for, for that, that task, for example. Uh, and as you can see, it found somebody, so it's going to go ahead and route that um, over to um, the agent desktop. So as the agent, once I go up ready, I will be able to, uh, the task will arrive at the agent desktop. In the example that I have here, we actually have, um, this is not particularly the GBank demo, but you have the ability to screen pop a HTML, uh, you know, a web page that will cover the full information about that particular um, about that particular task. So, in the case of Salesforce, for example, or any of the CRMs, since some of the CRMs, um, even though it's a web application, they don't allow you to put it into an iframe. And in that case, what happened is that you probably you can screen pop as a as a separate as, um, application. If the agent is already logged into that, that application, it would just go ahead and do the screen pop because it's just an HTTP post at that point. 
So what else can we do with, with these API? You can update a task. So in your, um, in your applications, in your external applications, for example, let's say somebody changed something in that, in that record, for example, in that application, the credit card application. You will be able to, based on some of the triggers or anything that you have on that um, on that external app, you will be able to update that information if if it, it's still sitting in our in the queue. Um, you can um, in your in your uh, you will also be able to get the task properties. So if there's anything particular about that that you're interested in, for example in whatever flow that you're doing um, in, your, in your apps, you will be able to get that information. Let's say somebody went ahead and um, go in and process this application, for example, but it hasn't been routed to, some, and to a person. Um, let's say the applicants went ahead and say, I don't want this anymore, for example. Um, you can actually have it in your, in your workflow process to go ahead and stop that task. So what that does is that it will stop that task from being routed. The other, the other way that we do it in this case is that um, when you process the, the um, uh, when the agent process the um, record in the, the, the external application, you can actually invoke the stop so that um, if, even if it's on their desktop, it will automatically stop at that time. They don't have to click on anything. They can just process it within the context of the other sites or not. Okay, so here, how, do, uh, how does the task get to Genesis from Salesforce? So in this case, what we do is um, we write uh, an Apex code that use the task routing API to create, update, and get property, and also stop that task. Um, if you look at, uh, for example, uh, this is the new case. So, okay. So, on the left-hand side here, this is the HTTP request header with information about invoking that task routing API. So, for example, you will be able to see uh, where I was talking about this particular URL right here. That URL are, uh, is actually generated um, in uh, Genesis um, uh, with a provisioning uh, app that we call Agent Setup for creating H Cloud. So when you create, uh, for example, if I create this and I call it um, test service, it will it will generate this um, full URL for you, and then you can just use that to put it here as part of the URL to do the submit. Um, part, when you in, uh, when you create that service and uh, that service, it will also provide you with an API key that you can also use. Um, you know, for um, as part of, um, of the of the header here. So this is going to be const. Um, the API key is going to be constant through all of your um, any of the code that you may write for you for um, that particular um, uh, for Genesis. Um, but these are different, of course, for every tenant. Um, this may change based on the name. So for example, here I have test service. I can have one called Oracle service. I can have one called Salesforce service, for example. And then that way it will, can be used by the different groups in your company. Um, on this side is where um, the, we're using the JSON generator to add data uh, from that particular, here I'm working with the case, right? So we can add particular data directly from uh, Salesforce into that into the um, attached data for that task. So in designer, you can actually look at some of these pieces of information to begin processing um, the, um, that task, for example. Um, so completing a case by invoking stop. So on this side, I'm, I'm updating the case, for example, the, the, the task with the additional information that somebody has gone in to update that case, for example. So here, this is where we call the update uh, API. And this is where, we, if we need to do a stop, we can invoke it in this way. 
so um so that's the apex code that's the general code that we have to do the invoke so how does it get invoked in the first place so in in salesforce they have this idea uh, called triggers right so uh, as part of the triggers you, they have different events on the on a record when you create that so it's like uh, before update, after update, before insert, after insert. So you can actually write particular um, uh, triggers to either um, create, um, you know, to create uh, the, the, the task, the initial task. So here we're calling, and then of course in that trigger, we're calling um, the submitter um, with that particular case IDs. So that case will be, and and to be fair, you can, in your code, in your Apex code here, you can generate the actual Salesforce URL also, so that when you submit it over in, in Genesis, the designer would just pass that through, and then you can, in, um, um, you know, screen pop with that particular record. So, so it, this is sample for Salesforce, but the idea works for other, you know, other CRM or your, um, you know, um, homegrown web, web application also. Okay. So, um, where do you find information for um, for what everything that is being done with um, with this task? So you can go to uh, developer.genesisstyle.com, and that will give you detailed um, uh, information about how a um, how you can invoke those tasks. Uh, we have um, example, we haven't uh, submit we haven't posted the example for Salesforce there yet. But uh, you know if you're interested, I uh, you know you can contact um, your uh, sales executive <coughs> or your SE and they will pass you over to me and I can uh, forward that code to you. Um, and we will be we'll we'll be uh, posting those samples. Uh, probably in the next um, month or so. So, any questions? Yeah? So when you set the agent to go from not ready to ready, what channel does it show up? So, in this particular case that we had, for example, they, we add the work item as the, as the channels. Oh, okay. Okay, so when they go ready, they will be available for everything, but they can also choose to just go available for, for work items. So work item is what it's called? Yes, yes. Work item is the channels that we reserve for, uh, for tasks. So. Okay, um, is there, we're doing interactions and everything else, so we can run this with through WFM also where we can manage our agency and with the interactions and you know for this we do email now so mm -hmm. it's basically the same premise as email now what if we send uh so on another part of that say it comes in uh credit you know, credit card let's say credit card mm -hmm. comes in agent gets it and has to respond back to that customer can we be said what we send it comes back to the original agent again like in the email so um, we're, we're needing more information from that customer. That's because you can route the works, of course. You yeah, I mean, you should be able to route the same exact way. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. And the reason is because we, we leverage designer, we leverage everything that's that's existing. Okay, good. So it's just another work well, out. It's just another interaction. Yet, but until we get to nine, supposedly yeah. our email will be able to transition into it. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, great. Uh, good point. You do need designer nine. Nine, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Okay. This will require designer nine. This works well with our back office. Really well, so yeah. some of that nature. Okay, great. <coughs> Any other questions? Uh, yes? Um, the CPI is exposed to correct. Correct. Yes. And is there a security protocol in the other use of OAuth 2 to authenticate the user as the CPI? Very correct, it's only the API key, which is uh, specific to each customer, to, to each time. And it will not get generated until you create that service. Right, but it's a secure connection between wherever the source and the API. Yeah. Right, yes. HTTPS. Yeah, of course. So you're defining a work item to be an email or it could be a web form as well? Currently, yes. Work item is our placeholder for, for these. So when you're talking about 
email, you need like for an external email system, for example. Okay, so it's like still Oracle email coming in. Yeah, so the, that, that particular, yeah, so the particular email may have come in to an external system, and then you can invoke this to, to route that particular ID. But in, in that case, it's a placeholder to at, as a route for routing only. Once the, the agent answers and all of that, that's still managed directly within that app, the, the external applications, not Genesis. Okay, within Oracle, for example. Exactly, exactly. Would exactly. that be the same for an Oracle chat? No. No, okay. Yes. Okay. These are for delay items, not. Yes, not real time items, yes. So. What sort of statistics are available on the actual interaction part of this? Um, basic, you know, like um, how long um, something's been in queue. It's um, I don't have the screenshots here, but um, um, it's the basic information that we get if you would get on a chat. So it ha it's we we use the same reporting basically. So the stat, how long's been in queue, how long is that? Um, for how long it's been received, if an agent handles it, how many they've handled over time. Okay. Okay. It's the API key of the private key for our phone. How do you do it? Do you no, it's a, it's a unique key generated in our end. Yeah, just your So but you're not suggesting we give it to the web browser, right? Just... You could. But you know, it's really up to you whether you want to do a front end integration with it versus uh, back end integration. Yeah, because if I put it in the browser, then let's say Andre has when I got the key. And what stops me from acting? Well, not for anything. You can use that key to submit something. You want to be able to do it. Yes. That's all the information that I have. Any okay. other questions? You we, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you manage the queues the same way you manage the email queues? Yep. In the same location? Mm -hmm. Currently, um, in order to generate the keys and the URL, um, you have to, um, one of our internal people will have to do it. Uh, at some point in the future, uh, we will expose this so that you can manage it yourself. But at the current time, it will, um, you sh should, uh, it will be done by one of the, our internal ops uh, team. I can do the stuff like the skills and the maturity when I don't have skills. Yes. And you said this is only available on Designer 9? Correct. All right. We will have a, um, a session in this afternoon where you will be able to actually, um, I'll expose uh, that the, the Salesforce code to you. And if you're interested, then you will be able to manipulate a lot of that data yourself just to see how it works. Um, just a, some question. How many of you here have Salesforce and what CRM do you have? Oh, I know what you have. <laughs> Salesforce. Yeah, Salesforce. Okay. You see me. So, yeah, even though uh, Salesforce actually has a, a easy, um, uh, provide us with very easy access, and because of that, we just use that as a sample. But the idea works the same if you have any other apps. So. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you very much for coming.